integrity. I gotta walk like a man. You better speak up when you talk to me. You better lift up your chin. I'm about to take over the globe. I got the whole world in my hand. I've been here before, that's the reason he sent me to do it all over again. I gotta keep my integrity. I gotta walk like a man. You better speak up when you talk to me. You better lift up your chin. I'm about to take over the globe. I got the whole world in my hand. I've been here before, that's the reason he sent me to do it all over again. Can't take you serious, you acting petty. Making me laugh like Ed, Ed and Eddie. Run out of truth when things are too heavy. Like Kevin Hart, he wasn't ready. I take a bullet, I die for my people. You pull the trigger just to get equal. Most of you people fall out cause it's hard. Take pressure like dope, I'm on my job. I can't believe it in spiritual Egypt. My people are evil than ever before. They kill a nigga with chicken like damn, bruh. I can't even walk to the store. They be out here screaming, Jesus. They gonna be on y'all. Yeah, play that video real quick, man, because this is a hidden agenda. Apologized twice Tuesday after posting on social media an anti-Semitic message misattributed to Adolf Hitler, an admiration for Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. He later met with Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie late Tuesday afternoon, according to our Tim McManus. Here's sound from his initial apology. On behalf of myself, I just want to uh, let you guys know I apologize. I didn't. Uh, intend, you know, any harm or any hatred towards any people. I'm, I'm for one. I'm for love, and I extend it every, every day. People that know me know I have no hatred in my heart, and I never try to, you know, put another religion down to up uplift my religion or my race. So from the bottom of my heart, I just want you guys to understand that, and uh, it's coming from me and my feelings, and you know, I just hopefully everybody respects my platform, my opinion to try to just enlighten my, my people. And uh, just let everybody know that um, there's no hatred involved. The Eagles released this statement on Jackson, which read in part, regardless of his intentions, the messages he shared were offensive, harmful, and absolutely appalling. They have no place in our society and are not condoned or supported in any way by the organization. We are disappointed, and we reiterated to Deshaun the importance of not only apologizing, but also using his platform to take action to promote unity, equality, and respect. We are continuing to evaluate the circumstances and will take appropriate action. Max, I want to start with you. Down real quick, pause it. And if you look, um, you know the reason why they own him like this is because um, the owner of the Eagles is a fake Jew. That's why, yeah, he's talking about his balls. That's why they snatched his balls from him and, and took him. It's a, it's a sad day. Um, give me give me that Deuteronomy 28 real quick. Deuteronomy 28, and um, I want to read verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 29. This is how you know we are the real Jews, the real Israelites that the Bible speaks of because we fit the curses. Read that. And thou shalt grope at noonday. As the blind gropeth in darkness. Searching, uh huh. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Uh huh. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. We are oppressed to the point where uh, a black man can't even speak openly about his own history. He has to bow down to others and exalt their history while he lets them walk all over him. He can't even speak about the, the black man's uh, uh, plight, the Holocaust, the hundred million that, uh, that died just in the transatlantic slave trade alone. He can't even speak about his own history. He got to bow down and let every other nation walk all over him, oppressed and forever. Go back to the video. Go back to it. They made him apologize. Turn it up. Me, Molly? Yeah, you match, right, please. Get, this, get the sound right, y'all. Come on. Um, first of all, I'm Jewish. No, so you I ain't. To accept Deshaun Jackson. No, comedy. you are not. But, but I need to. No, no, more. I take that back. So yeah. pause it. I mean, he, yeah, uh, take it. I take that back. Yeah, he okay. is Jew Jewish. 
He want to be us. Yeah, he is not <laughs> the real Jew of the Bible, the Israelite at all. He's none of that. So he, he <laughs> is Jewish. Hey, you know what's funny, Cat? For him just to scream, that, man. Come on, y'all stay with us, y'all. It ain't that hard. Hey, for him to say that. Just every, escape. You got to hear what he's going to say. But then just for the first word, I say he's Jewish. It's going to disallow everything that he's about right. to say. That tells everything. You he's not the people of the He's book. not the people of the Jew ish. Moving going forward, you won't hear him say nothing about black history at all. You won't hear a peep out of him anymore. Nope. Not even to talk about just any movement that his people's doing. He won't even put his two cents into it. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what? I'm just stay away. That's on them. And the best thing for him is just to learn behind in behind the scenes. Secret. Joseph of Aaron. Arimathea, learn in secret. Go back to the video real quick. I'd like to accept Deshaun Jackson's apology, but I need to know more. So let me start by saying, anytime someone thinks they're quoting Adolf Hitler and doing it as though he's saying something important and true, and it involves Jewish people being bad, that is a bad thing to do. Look at this. That's not, yes, you so will they, offend they can do no uh, wrong. not just Jewish people, but any righteous person. Just this, like I sit here on this show and defend that, all kinds of marginalized groups all the time and try to be an ally for them and an advocate for them. This hit anyone who is feels just a as I do screen of any you really want to get to feel the same way. Um, he, part of the quote, they will extort America. Their plan, meaning the Jews, for world domination won't work if the Negroes knew who they were. This is not about uplifting black people primarily. This is yes, about, is. if you think about it, Deshaun, why black people are in a bad position. Jews are being scapegoated. First of all, there's no truth in it. Jews do not have a plan for world domination. I have hey, no plan hey, for it. world domination. The first sign of anything is what? Denial. Yep. Denial plausibilities would say, oh, no, 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 that's not our plan at all. No, 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 we're not yep. doing that. No. But behind the scenes, you you doing certain things. And and it's no secret, and we're going to pull up the arc, it's no secret to who's running a lot of the media behind the scenes. We ain't stupid to it. The first thing is denial. That's what it says, a hidden agenda. Play that. Nation, and, and there is no secret cabal with some plan for world domination. I don't even pause know it, black pause it. male... Pause it. You know how he... You know this is a is an outright damn lie? They got a book called The Kabbalah that outlines world domination. Yep. They got it. Where all other people on the face of the earth are animals. Yep. They can be lied to. They can be killed. You can kill their kids. They book... Their own Kabbalah says that. Yep. That's how you don't, he don't know the hell he's talking about. He is just, he's just, um, he is living off the benefits of being called Jewish. He knows nothing about how they get down. The Kabbalah book, Bishop brought it out before. It goes in detail of how to overthrow the rest of these goyim that they call them. Question. See that? Now they want to get a fire. This is what they do. You speak against them in any shape, form, or fashion, they try their best to get you fired. That's what they do. But they can speak against us all day. They can manufacture lies against us all day. And it's okay with Hashem. This is why the devil's a lie. Give me that next article about uh, is, are Israelis racist? Are Israelis racist? I'm just curious. It should be are uh, uh, Edomites racist? Now, uh, Priest Daniel Allah had posted this, so I went, to, I went to check it out. It says, are Israelis racist? You could go, this is on viewpoint.com. Go ahead. Are, are, are Israelis racist? Let's zoom out some. There you go. Our race, speaking of the Jews, is the master race. We are divine gods on this planet. We are as different from the inferior races as they are from insects. In fact, compared to our race, now, other A ra lot of this stuff on is taken from the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud. But now when we say stuff like that, we're evil. We're, but they say it all the time, and it's acceptable. Go ahead. 
In fact, compared to our race, other races are beasts and animals. Cattle at best. That's what the word goyim means. It literally means cattle. Like as in cattle or chattel slavery. That's what they're calling us. Good. Other races are considered as human excrement. Meaning doo-doo, feces, fecal matter. Our destiny is to rule over the inferior races. Our earthly kingdom will be ruled by our leader with a rod of iron. The masses will lick, at, lick our feet and serve us as our slaves. So that's saying exactly what Isaiah 60 and Revelation 2 says. But when we say it, we're evil. But they can say it and it's okay in Hashem. It's, it right. says, Minachim. Hey, hey, they're talking about what we're going to do to them. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. They're the ones who going to lick our feet. <laughs> right. That's, right. that's, that's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. That shows you that this, this whole uh, plot by these people are antichrist because the Bible does not support what they're saying in terms of them. Mm -hmm. the, all they have to do is read the Bible and it's true, but they can't do that. They're the devil that the Bible even speaks of. So how are they going to come up with truth, period? It says, Menachem begin, begin. Israeli Prime Minister Menachem begin in a speech to the Knesset. Go down, Knesset. go down. I want to get to this main thing. Go down, go down. These are the, see the Talmud? That's where all these sayings are from. So it's not nothing that we made up. Y'all could buy the Talmud if you want with the little uh, uh, Magen David, or not even Magen David. It's the uh, star of uh, Rimfram, the hexagram on there. Go down. Uh, go down. I want to show you something. Go down, go down. Now, they take excerpts from the Fine, Talmud. Okay. Jews always have to try to deceive non-Jews. So that's why they are comfortable lying in the media. They, they don't feel nothing. nothing. No empathy, no sympathy, no nothing. Why? Because the so-called Jewish Talmud teaches them Jews always have to try to deceive non-Jews. That's from Zohar 1. Because somebody watching right now going, see, they're racist. They hate. No, we're reading from your book. Hey, how come they're not an evil cult? Exactly. Read on. Go down. Um, the next one, Bishop? Yeah. Oh. Non-Jewish property belongs to the Jew who uses it first. Baba Bathra. Mm -hmm. If two Jews have deceived a non-Jew, they have to split the profit. Mm-hmm. Every Jew is allowed to use lies and perjury to bring a non-Jew to ruin. You see that? Do you see that? That's Baba in their book. Kamah. Every Jew is allowed to use lies and perjury to bring in. So when they go to court, there's no, we can perjure. We can perjure ourselves. It's all right in Hashem. So, so what they're doing in Jersey City to try to swindle the people out of their houses, they're telling you that they are allowed to do that. Mm. There you go. Go ahead. Um... The possessions of the goyim are like an ownerless desert, and everybody, every Jew, who seizes it has acquired it. Jump down to where it says about Messiah. Right here when the Messiah comes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when the Messiah comes, all will be slaves of the Jews. Erubin 43b. See, now... They don't know that that is true, but on our side. They thinking it's for them. But no, it's talking about for us. For us. But what I'm showing you, if when we say things like, they call it hate speech. But it's in the Bible. It's in their Talmud. And this is why they say, no, no, we don't get on TV with them, because they will embarrass the hell out of us. That's why they look for people that just like to talk. We go, no, 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 let's open the books. Open, let's open, start with the Bible first and foremost. Go ahead. Uh, the one at the bottom right there, it says, if a Jew, scroll up some a little bit, right there. If a Jew is tempted to do evil, he should go to a city where he is not known and do the evil there. Mm. Non-Jews, the next one, non-Jews are not human. Wow. Only Jews are human. Only ye are designated man. Baba Maziah. Jews are divine. If a heathen Gentile hits a Jew, the Gentile must be killed. Hitting a Jew is like, or is the same as hitting God. Mm -hmm. 
Sanhedrin 58B. Jump down to where it says Jews may lie to non-Jews. Go to. Go, the, go, go. The go. cheat one right there? Jews may steal from non-Jews. Baba Mezia 24A. Go ahead. Um, right, that's the housing, right. If a Jew... No, no, I'm not... You, uh, come uh, on. Okay to... Oh, okay. Go, come on, brother. Right there. Read that one. Jews may lie. Down, down. Jews... Right there, there right. you go. Jews may lie to non-Jews. Jews may use lies. Cer- certifuge, subterfuge. 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 Uh, to circumvent a Gentile. See that? Kama. That's the housing. That's what they're doing on the media. Saying that we're, we're, uh, we're a hate group. We, we're filled with, uh, we're killing people. That's what they do. Subterfuge. What's the one above mo- Jews may right. rob and kill. Su- yeah. Hold it. Subterfuge is, is another word for red herring. Right. Yep. Deceit. Read the one above it, Sakar. Uh, Jews may rob and kill non-Jews. When a Jew murders a Gentile, Cathian, there will be no death penalty. What a Jew steals from a Gentile, he may keep. Right. Sanhedrin 57a. Go down, go down, 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 down. See where it says a Jew may marry a three-year-old girl? Oh. Go up so we can see the whole thing. <laughs> go ahead. Bishop, yeah, go, let's go back up. Go back up. There's some nasty devils here. It says Gentile girls are in the state of Nada, fifth from birth. Filth, filth. from birth. Gentile right girls are in the state of Nada. So min- ministration, mm-hmm. blood, just, oh, gosh. Hey, they nasty, bro. <laughs> from Aboda Zarah, 36B. So go to that one that says Jew may marry. Bring it all the way up so we can see the whole statement. A Go Jew ahead. may marry a three-year-old girl, specifically three years and a day old. <laughs> Where's that from? Read that. Sanhedrin 55b. A maid in three years and a day may be acquired in marriage by Koshin. And if her deceased husband's brother cohabits with her, she becomes his. The penalty of adultery may be incurred through her. If a nada, she defiles him who has connection with her, so that he in turn defiles that upon which he lies, as a garment which has lain upon a person afflicted with gonorrhea. Mm. Emphasis in original text of Sonsino edition, E.D. Right. Go down. Come on. Raise it. Lift it up. Wait, wait, wait. What do them signs say? Okay, a guardian stop protecting pedophiles. Okay, but watch what it says under it. Source. Source. A Jew may have sex with a child as long as the child is less than nine years old. Sanhedrin 54b. Now, we might, we're not saying that, that they're practicing it, but it's written in their Talmud. Go ahead. When a grown man, when a grown up man has intercourse with a little girl, it is nothing. Ketubah. Ketubah 11b. Ketubah 11b. Murdering goyim is goyim, like... Goyim, that means cattle or the nations. Is like killing a wild animal. Sanhedrin 59a. Even the best of the Gentiles should be killed. Aboda Zara 26b. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Now this is from... I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong website. It's View Zone. V-I-E-W-Z-O-N-E dot com. Watch them try to take this website down. At the bottom, it says Viewzone dot com. You got Jesus, talking about Jesus. Yes, right read that. Um, highlight it again for the people. There we go. Jesus is in hell and is being punished by being boiled in semen. Christians are boiled in dung. Get time 57A. Wow. We're the bad guys. We're the bad guys. Go back to it. I wish I had it. I should have put it. Or extort America means in this context. I don't think you do either, and I don't think anyone does. It's unintelligible. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it plays on the worst kind of anti-Semitic tropes and stereotypes um, through the years, especially scapegoating Jews for problems. So what it appears to me 
is that Deshaun Jackson is susceptible to low quality information. Mm. And in the internet age, it's very dangerous to be that way. For those hey, especially he said low quality information. So he's talking about the Bible. <laughs> yeah. He's a... and, but he's also going into that quote, which um a lot of people don't understand that quote is photoshopped. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The actual book that um it, that it is in doesn't say that actual quote. So that's photoshopped. That's low quality information. But the part of the Negroes uh, uh, being the Jews, that's high quality H2O information. That's high quality, right? So so that part is right because that's photoshopped, but the other half it ain't. But like you said, he used an Adolf as a smoke screen to discount all of the information. Let it play. People who disseminate these messages are hoping that influencers, like maybe Deshaun Jackson, who are susceptible to low quality of inf well, low quality information, accept this information as true, this disinformation as true, and disseminate it and use their influence to get people to agree with it. Word, so if Deshaun Jackson wants to educate people, then he, Deshaun, you should become educated. I've dealt with Deshaun Jackson, nice guy, I like him. But, and, and I'd like to accept his apology not just as a Jewish person, but as a, as a person of social conscience. But I have to know more, Deshaun. When you say you're you tweeting this about. not to offend anyone, but to uplift everyone, why does it say they? Why is the quote about white Jews in particular who have a plan for world domination? What is that about? You couldn't uplift uh, uh, African Americans without singling out Jews falsely? for having some kind of conspiracy to uh, Jews in particular to keep black people down or uninformed uh, in order that the Jews should dominate the world? Do you understand? And, and, and the fact that it was attributed to Hitler and you thought that it was, it turns out it wasn't Hitler, but you thought it was? That, so I'm glad, Deshaun, that you apologized. Um, and I would like to accept it. But brother, I gotta know more. I gotta know much more. You're, the, the, what you've explained so far doesn't cut it. Pause it. Him wanting to know more is that he wants to know where you've been learning that your people are the real Jews. That's exactly what he right. wants. I wanna get down to the root of it because he got connections. I know people, I'm in New York. I know other people. Tell me where you even got the thought from at first. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. You don't just want to, oh, it's, it's done with. No, because if you believe that, then somebody else believes that. We can't let that spread that yep. these people are the real people of the book. Yep. We'll come back to it. Go okay. Deuteronomy 33, 29. Because in order for, for the true Israelites to proclaim who they are, you've got to do this. Read verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, uh -huh. the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. So in order to expose the truth of who the real Jews are, the liars of uh, proclaiming to be the Jews have to be exposed. They have to be exposed. You got to let the world know that, okay, well, if I'm the real, and then they're the fake was then, so what's going on? You got to expose the liars in order for the truth to spring out. Read it again. Verse the bottom, and thy enemies. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Because there is, there's not going to be two sets of Jews in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> it's not going to be the white Jews and black Jews in the kingdom. That's not going down. Right. That's not going down at all. Finish it out. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. And thou shalt tread upon thy high places. Now pull up the video Officer Liam just put in the Sabbath class where it gets straight to the point of what Killer Man is saying. But that's what he wants. He said, I got to know more. He wants to know where you've been learning this from. Because he wants to take down the, this is what the, see, remember the, the scripture talk about the inward thought of every one of them is deep. He wants to find out the foundation of where you've learned it so he can destroy the foundation of it to make sure it never rises again. Uh, pull up the video. Yeah.
Play that. About Jews. Stephen A., it's as bad as it gets. And here's the problem. The white citizens of America, he quotes, will be terrified to know all this time they've been mistreating and discriminating and lynching the children of Israel. In other words, let me be very clear what this means. I'm from New York as you are, Stephen A. See? I understand what, he's, what he thinks he's saying. There is what bad information out there, um, especially on the streets, by the way, that oh. claims that one of the conspiracy theories goes conspiracy. that white Jews are only claiming to be the children of Israel and intentionally keeping African-Americans, black people in the dark that they're, in fact, the real children of Israel and, and keeping the world in the dark about that. Because that way they can somehow control the world, the white Jews. And that here's what's critical. Because he thinks, remember, Deshaun's saying, I was trying to educate my people, right? He's trying to e miseducate them. The white citizens of America, meaning the non-Jews, would be terrified to know all this time that they've been mistreating and discriminating and lynching the real children of Israel, meaning black people. In other words, the white Jews, like in the South, for example, who, the, sorry, the white people in the South, for example, who also hate Jews. So I'm talking about the ones who were lynching black people. The crimes they committed, they, they wouldn't have done it had it not been for the machinations of the, of the white Jews who's convinced them that, in fact, they're Jews and not the black people. Do you understand? It's, it's lunatic no, no, conspiracy anti-Semitism. In, like classic anti-Semitism. That's yeah. what he thought. That is the message. What I just said is the message he thought he was educating. So what I need to know from Deshaun Jackson before an apology is legitimate is, do you understand that's nonsense? What did you mean by that? Why did you repost that? Not generally that he, that he quoted Hitler or thought he did, look, look, but specifically go. what he quoted until he deals Man, with the message itself. Jews. I can't accept the apology, Pause though it. I'd like to. I'd like him to. Pause it. See, this is what we got to realize as a people here in Babylon the Great, that um, a nigga can be anything but the people of God. You can be a home, a, a sodomite. You could be a lesbian. Um, you can be a transsexual. You could be gender fluid. You could be a nigga. You could be a pimp. You could be all of that, but you are not allowed to be the people of God because if that truth of us being the people of God comes out, then you're going to see your enemies that are found liars. Now you talk about that that slave trade stuff, right? Go to um, go to my Jewish um, learning. This is from them, y'all. We didn't make this website up. We don't have my Jewish learning, uh, and pull that up. And let's see what it says. It goes, it says, were the false claims that Jews controlled the slave trade? Read that for us. Told you. Where the false claim that Jews control the slave trade comes from. Let's read that real quick. Hold on, hold on. Go down, go down, go down. Go, back, go up, go up. Right there, yeah, like many others. Like many others, Jews participated in the transatlantic slave trade, but they by no means dominated it. So they was in participation of it. See, that's what, what happens when that truth comes out. They try to act, act anti-Semitic. That, that is called, that's, um, what did he say? Um, what, what was the word he said that he said? Well, uh, conspiracy theories. That's conspiracy theories, what they do. Oh, anti-Semitic. And then you just, you don't say nothing about it. You don't do no research. You don't fact check them at all. That's conspiracy theories because they don't have no proof that they are the people of the book. They just throw that word out there and everything else shuts down. And I'm, we're going to pull up in a second where that come from. But go back to it. Let's read through it real quick. Read that. The role some Jews played in the Atlantic slave trade, both as traders and as slave owners, has been long acknowledged by historians. Long acknowledged by historians. Fact checked by historians. Read on. But allegations in recent decades that Jews played a disproportionate role in the enslavement of African Americans and that this fact has been covered up have made the topic a controversial one. Mm, go, hey, go back up to the top. Let me see something real quick. Okay, it's by MJL. Okay, go down. Go down. Keep going. Uh, keep going. Did Jews really own slaves? Let's read that. Did Jews really own slaves? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, go ahead. Jacob Rader Marcus, a historian and reform rabbi. So he's one of them. 
He's admitting that they own slaves. Max Kelly tried to act like they didn't do nothing that they had their hands wasn't in it at all. No, they was. Hey Cap, remember when Max said uh righteous men. Yeah, yeah. That's he what did he say said. That. Read on. Wrote in his four volume history of American Jews. Four volumes. Go ahead. That over 75% of Jewish families in Charleston, South Carolina, mm. Richmond. In the South Vir- that he was talking about, right? In the South. Go ahead. Richmond, Virginia, and Savannah, Georgia owned slaves. And nearly 40% of Jewish households across the country did. Across the country. 40%. That's that's why you got to, that's why we have to know our history so we can call their ass anybody, not just them, but anybody else out that lay claim that we are conspiracy theorists. No, no, buddy. We got facts. Right, right. And on top of that, we got the truest book on the planet to back us up. So you just ain't going to throw that anti-Semitic word on us because we are Shemitic. So you can't use that on us. And don't say nothing about him. Nothing. Yeah. I say he's all about who? The so-called African-American. Yeah, exactly. And on, 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 on top of that, Max said, hey, I don't accept your apology until you give me some facts. You know what? You contact us. Uh, uh, what was that NFL player? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Deshaun. Jackson. Deshaun, hey, contact us. We'll give you facts. We'll give you the facts. Go back to the article. 40% of Jewish households, read that, uh, pick it up some, the Jewish. Of Jewish households across the country did. The Jewish population in these cities was quite small, however. So the total number of slaves they owned represented just a small fraction of the total slave population. Okay, go ahead. Eli Faber, a historian at New York City's John Jay College, reported that in 1790, Charleston's Jews owned a total of 93 slaves. That's a lot of slaves, go ahead. And that perhaps six Jewish families lived in Savannah in 1771. Go ahead. A number of wealthy Jews were also involved in the slave trade in the Americas. Also involved. Go ahead. Some as ship owners who as imported, what? As ship owners. As ship owners. They was the ones that was given insurance on the ships if they broke down on the seas. Go ahead who imported slaves and others as agents who resold them. Mm -hmm. In the United States, Isaac DaCosta of Charleston, David Franks of Philadelphia, and Aaron Lopez of Newport, Rhode Island, are among the early American Jews who were prominent in the importation and sale of African slaves. Uh In addition, some Jews were involved in the trade in various European Caribbean colonies. European Caribbean colonies. Let's see what it say. Alexandra Lindo. A French-born Jew who became a wealthy merchant in Jamaica. In Jamaica, uh uh-huh. In the late 18th century was a major seller of slaves on the island. So they was involved in the slave trade. We don't need to read the rest of that. So they was involved in it. They ain't absolved from it. And and we know what the scripture says in Revelation. Go to Revelation. Revelation 13. Revelation 13, let's read verse 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Uh He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And and the thing is about about God is that he judges a whole nation. (laughs) He don't just let a few of you, no, no. All of you all going to pay because all of you all had a hand in it. You benefit from it even till this day. Now, um, go to Psalms 83. What do you got? Uh, Go to Psalms 83, and let's read verse 1 through 3. We're going to focus on just that. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Uh-huh. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Uh, thy enemies, go ahead. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Uh-huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people uh-huh. and consulted against thy hidden ones. That's why I said it's a hidden agenda. And then it goes in to say they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. That's what they do behind the scenes. And, and, and you got to understand, when you got money, you, you, your level of craftiness rises. 
it ain't just a low level sneaking, you know, uh, when the sun go down and then, you know, you jump in your car and you go somewhere. No, no. They got levels of craftiness. Go to the uh, second, the USA article of um, anti-Semitism. U.S. De State's Department of State defining anti-Semitism. This is the this is the U.S. Department of State. This is a national government website. This is the crafty council that they use to keep the truth hidden of who we are. Uh, scroll down. Well, let's let's read that. Defining anti-Semitism, Office of International Religious Freedom, so-called. Let's read that real quick. The Department of State has used a working definition along Stop. with Stop. Now, this is remember, some of y'all talked to already this morning. You got to pay attention to words. You got to pay attention to words. Go back, go back to that. It said the Department of State has used a working definition. Well, who knows what, what does working definition mean? Uh, 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 Lemuel, where's the microphone? You got the microphone? What does that mean? Working definition. That's broke. <laughs> what does that mean? They use a definition that works for the agenda currently already. Okay. You close to it. Uh, Zacchaeus. I like that. You said it. Let's see if he said it in a different way. Uh, it's like saying um, anti-Semitic and everybody automatically think, nope, okay, you nope, missed it. Nope, you missed it. You missed it. Uh, give it to Joshua. I told you, Joshua. He had to say that. Good. It means they can change it however they want to. There you go. They can change it and make it fit their agenda at any moment in time. It can always mean something different no matter what you say. Oh, anti-Semitic, because it's a working definition. Oh, we didn't think about that at first. You know what? Add that on to it. Oh, oh, now, now the working definition is if black people say that they are the real Jews, anti-Semitic. Well, I only said that we are the people of the book. And it, he says Deuteronomy 20, anti-Semitism. Hey, this is, once don't again. Don't get caught up, y'all. Pay attention Yeah, back don't there. get caught up. This is crafty counsel. There you go. Okay? Crafty counsel. For them to come out, A, hey, just in case, let's have a plan A, B, C, D, and E. Just in case if one of these niggas wake up yep. and understand what we're doing. We'd be like, hey, we could change it. We could turn it to this to back us up. Yep. Once again, like we read in Deuteronomy, uh, was that, 33? Yeah. And saying that what we will, our enemies will be found liars. Yep. That's lying right there. Yep. They lying and they coming up with any semantic to continue with they lie. Yeah, there you go. Take down the black bars. Look at this. Read that if you can see it. Or take take down the scripture. Yeah, drop it. Boop. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Drop that. So this is Sean Jackson. A couple days after he did his apology. Today, I had an opportunity to speak with 94-year-old Holocaust survivor, Mr. Edward Mossberg. Thank you, Mr. Mossberg, for your valuable time and insight today. I'm taking this time to continue with educating myself and bridging the gap between different cultures, communities, and religions. Love to all to be continued. I guarantee you that, that when a white man Jewish man, Arab man, whoever you want to be, ever called a black man a nigga, apologized the next day, and then went and learned about 400 years of oppression of black people. Have you ever seen that? Not once. Not once. But that's what you can do with your own conspiracy theory of, of a working definition of anti-Semitism. Ain't nobody ever called us niggas. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't understand the implications that I had. And I went and talked to a Jim Crow survivor. And I'm educating myself on black history. You ain't never seen that in the face of history. That's how you know we the Israelites. Our grandparents lived through Jim Crow. And ain't nobody ever sat down and asked them of, an, of another nation. Right. They've never sat down and asked them, what was it like to know right. Jim Crow? They didn't do that. That's why you know we the Israelites. Oppressed forever. Uh, Bartimaeus. Real quick. Then I'm going to go back to Psalms 83. I don't want to lose the thought. We had, and just like you said right now, we had a quarterback on that same team, uh, Riley Cooper. Oh, that got yeah. caught do, calling us, you know, the N-word. Same team. Yeah. And it never had nothing to do about it. Nope. Got a raise. So, same owner now. Yep. Yep. All right. 
Yeah, he didn't have to apologize. He had to do no classes. He no. ain't had to go learn from nobody. Right. And a couple months later, he ended up getting a new, bigger contract. Five yeah, he got extension. a bigger one. And the owner didn't say nothing. Nope. Owner was quiet as a Psalm, mouse. Go to Psalms 83 and 3 again. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. This is it right here. Go back to it. The U.S. State Department on the freedom of religion. This is crafty counsel. That's why, like we've been brought up before, on that dollar bill, it got a six-point star on the American dollar bill. They in cahoots with their brother from the other side of the earth. All of them Edomites. Pull it back up. Working definition. Read on. The Department of State has used a working definition along with examples of anti-Semitism since 2010. Uh-huh. On May 26, 2016, the 31 member states of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, of which the United States is a member, mm. adopted a non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism at its plenary in Bucharest. This definition is consistent with and builds upon the information contained in the 2010 State Department definition. As a member of the IHRA, the United States now uses this working definition and has encouraged other governments... That's your crafty council all over the world. Encouraged other governments. Read on. And international organizations to use it as Ooh. well. Hey, this is, why, this is why I said the crafty council of Esau is way above Negro's heads. They just ain't dealing with right here on the street corner. They internationally have made this a working definition all throughout the world. So no Negro on the face of the earth can rise up and say that we the real Jews. Anti-Semitic, yep. or we'll take everything you got. You know, I apologize. <laughs> no matter what <laughs> language you speak. Yeah, German, whatever it might be. Uh, read that Bucharest. Let's read that real quick. In the spirit of the Stockholm Declaration that states, with humanity still scarred by anti-Semitism and xenophobia. Pause it. How come, how come humanity ain't scarred about the damn 400 years they done had us oppressed in America. They don't give a damn. You can't, we can't even speak on our own history. How come the whole world ain't impressed about that? Crafty council. Go ahead. And remember this, now look at this, okay, anybody, we don't advocate violence towards anybody. I wanna throw that out there. We don't advocate violence towards anybody. Um, but let's, when you weigh it on the balance, it was, it was four years of oppression, if you want to call it that, um, compared to four centuries of it. And nobody cares. Nobody's scarred. They don't give a damn. Go, go, go back to it. Uh, it with all humanity, scarred. Go ahead. With humanity still scarred by anti-Semitism and xenophobia, the international community shares a solemn responsibility to fight those evils. This is unbelievable. Go ahead. The committee, the committee on anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial, called the IHRA plenary in Budapest, 2015, to adopt the following working definition of anti-Semitism. Here we go. Let's 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 see the crafty council. Go on ahead. 26th of May 2016, the plenary in Bucharest decided to adopt the following non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism. Now, here it goes. Here it goes. R read that. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. So there's no more freedom of speech. It's gone. Go ahead. Rhetorical and physical manifestation of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. Now go down, scroll down a little bit more. Let's see, hold on, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's, let's read the bullet points right there. Let's read, yeah, read those. Calling for aiding or justifying This the, is going into, go, read contemporary examples. Contemporary examples of anti-Semitism in public life, the media, schools, the workplace, and in the religious sphere could, taking into account the overall context, include, but are not limited See, to. This is the working definition. Now look at all the stuff they got in here. Go ahead. Calling for aiding or justifying the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology 
or an extremist view of religion. Okay, like you said, we don't we don't advocate hurting or harming or killing anybody. Go ahead. Making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as collective, such as especially but not exclusively the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Pause it. Now, I mean, no pause. But you see that, right? Controlling the media and all of that. Pull up that other article about... Um in, in the uh, media. Yep, but go back up to the top. Read that. List of Jewish American business people in media. So it said, this is anti-Semitism, right? Is it that if you say anything about them in the media. Go down, we're gonna go through the list of names just real quick, we need to stop right there, let's see. Advertising and public relations. You see at the end of it where it says, uh, Achenbaum Institute of Marketing and Weiss Advertising Agency, Public Relations and Propaganda. Keep going. Now you see, scroll down. I'm going to show you something. Scroll down. Public Relations, all of that, right? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. You see, that's fairly long, right? Stop. You see, that's fairly long in the communications and stuff, right? Now look how long the music industry, now black folk listen to music. Look how long the music industry list is compared. Atlantic Record, Mercury Records, MCA, Dunhill Records, Folkways Recordings. Uh, go through it, go ahead. Music industry. No, no, you ain't gotta read it, just let it go. That's Clive Davis over, I didn't know he was Jewish. Oh, you ain't got to. It's it's gonna take you a few. Yeah, yeah. We gonna it's gonna keep going. Boom! Stop right there. Look at that. That's way longer than the public media, or whatever. And you see CBS Records. You see Sony. You see DreamWorks. Remote Control Productions. All of that. That's media, right? Music's part of media. Go to the next one. Newspapers and publishing. Let's scroll through that. The New York Times is on there, Philadelphia Inquirer, the Pittsburgh Gazette, Good, Las Vegas Sun, Time Warners, United Communications Group, Penguin Books. We got a few books from Penguin Books, right? Simon and Schuster. Those is big names. Uh, Rolling Stone, you see at the end right there, it says U.S. News and World Report. Former owner of the New York Daily News, the Atlantic and Fast Company. That stuff is all over. Television, film, and video, right? Scroll through that. You see, hold on, stop right there. IV Adorad, Marvel Studios. You see AMC Entertainment Holdings. That's the movie theaters that's all over the uh, America. Warner Brothers. Keep going. Yeah. It's the Seattle NHL team. Walt Disney Company. Go down. Columbia Pictures. Paramount Pictures. And Fox Incorporated. CBS Sports, Major League Chicago White Sox. That's what's it. That's the crafted Lions Gate Entertainment, Fox Film Corporation, NBC News. These are major corporations. 20th Century Pictures. The, the, the movie thing on it goes on. NBC Entertainment, Home Shopping Network, Spike TV. Mm. Keep going. Keep going. DreamWorks, Relativity, uh, Relativity Media. Go through it quicker. Sony Music, Universal Pictures. Keep going. This is the entertainment, y'all. This is the entertainment. Look at that. CBS Evening News, NBC News. It ain't stopped yet, y'all. You're right, that's damn near everything. 20th Century Fox, Universal Pictures? Oh, hold on, hold on now. 
What, what, what's, what killer me talking about? What is he talking about? Those are all major networks in the Paramount Pictures, CNN Worldwide, NBC, CBS News. Yep. It's not talking about you people drop that it. just work for them. It says president, CEO. These are owners. Yes. Owners. It's not saying that the janitor is, a, is working for, no, no, it's saying the people that make stuff move. Psalms 83 and 3 again. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. That's the crafty counsel. Go back to the U.S. State Department. Go back to the U.S. State Department. It says, making mendacious, dehumanizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews collective, such as especially but not exclusively the myth about world Jewish conspiracies or of Jews controlling the media. Economy, government, or other societal institutions. That was just the media aspect of it. Go ahead, Soldier Lenny. Hey, Cap, and for all of us who didn't know what mendacious meant, it means lying. Mm, damn. So uh, who's lying then? Because those are major corporations, but this is when you don't know what the definition of anti-Semitism is. They just throw it out there and you shut down just like all our brothers is doing. And you can read that, read that stuff on your own. But what are they trying to hide? Go to that Babylon the Timbuktu book. Go to the Babylon the Timbuktu book and let's read the first page I got up there. Babylon the Timbuktu. Now, now this is what they're trying to hide. This is why everybody's coming to get Stephen Jackson. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, Ice Cube, all of that is because of this. Let's read that. In another example, the persecution of the black Jews in Portugal was so ruthless and frequent that Cecil Roth tells us the Jews did not divulge to their children the secret of their religion until they had obtained the age of reason. Now, he has to say black Jews because when we say Jews, the first thought is a white man that pops up in your mind. He has to say that. This is a historian. Read on. The Hebrew religion is such that if you deny your religion, you will eventually deny your nationality. That is why they will not let Negroes associate themselves as the people of God. Because if you associate yourself as the people of God, then you automatically going to go back to, quote unquote, our religion, which is the laws, statutes of, and commandments. They want us to continue to deny our nationality where we are nothing more than just niggas and coons and entertainers and athletes. That's all you deserve to be. That's all you should aspire to be. You should not think any higher than that. That's what they want. Because if we think higher than that, the, the whole industry of Babylon the Great crumbles. There's no more prison uh, system. If we're not in there, blacks and Hispanics, it ain't in there. The, the clothing industry, it, it gets destroyed if we stop wearing the pants and buying dresses. It gets destroyed. We can Because we can make our own dresses. It's hard as hell for a sister to make her own pants. We can cut fringes into our, into our clothes. We don't really need the long, the golden bullion. We don't really need that. We can do that on our own. That's why they don't want us to associate ourselves with the book, that we are the people of the book and keep denying ourselves. Go back to it. Let's read it. The social agenda. Read that. The sociologists and psychologists know. Sociologists and psychologists know. Crafty counsel. Go ahead. And history has proven that if you deny your culture and nationality over a long period of time, you will totally forget it through a process of assimilation. That's the hidden agenda. They want us to totally forget that we are the people of the book. That's still a heartbeat. Yeah. We want that thing to completely die. Yeah. It's still a heartbeat. Every time yep. uh, Deshaun Jackson get up and say, we are the people, boom, boom. Yep. Steven Jackson, boom, boom. No, no, no. This thing still got life to it. Yeah, we got to yeah. kill it. We got to shut it down. We got to shut it down. Uh, Go to the next uh page. Yeah, let's read that. This is what I was talking about earlier about you can be anything but the people of God. Read that. By the edict of King Manuel of Portugal in 1496, banishing the Jews from Portugal, 
all Jews were to be out of Portugal by October 1497. Uh -huh. However, considering this matter, he decided to Christianize the Jews. Christianize the Jews. That's what they did here. Go ahead. Fearing the loss of a valuable population. He wanted the continued use of their knowledge and knowledge and services. Playing sports, being entertainers, make us laugh, sing for us. Read on. He concluded that the only way the Jews could be tolerated in his country was to force them into the Christian faith. That's the only time, that is the only time that a Negro can, can associate himself with holiness if it comes through a white Jesus. It, it the, that's the only time they will allow you to be holy and righteous, like he was saying, is if you come through a white Jesus. But you can't come through the Bible. You can't be the chosen people of God. We don't want that. Right. That's what he was talking about. Uh, what's his name? Max? Yeah. That's what he was talking about. He said, where do you get these facts? Mm -hmm. or, or opinion, whatever. Where do you get it? That's why he said, I'm not going to accept the apology. I'm not going to accept it because you got to prove. Not knowing there's a lot of facts. There's a lot. There's a lot. And it's more. And it was funny. It's facts showing who we are. And it's facts showing that they are not the real Jews. Oh, oh we great get that. Um. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Let's see. Keep going on that. Is in, March 14, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. in March 1497, a command was proclaimed throughout Portugal for all Hebrew children between 4 and 14 years of age to be brought for baptism. All parents who did not bring their children voluntarily had their children taken away violently by the officials and forced into baptism. That's the same thing they do today. Go, go to the next one. Here we go. Now, this is their people. Yep. Arthur Kostler, the 13th tribe, right? Go go to the now now I want you, this is why they lay they will not let go of the title of being Jewish, right? This is the reason why. Um it's gonna tie back to the, the US State Department thing. Read that. This has led several historians to conjecture that a substantial part and perhaps the majority of Eastern Jews and hence of world Jewry might be of Khazar. Are of Khazar, go ahead. And not of Semitic origin. That's their own people saying that. That they are not of Semitic origin. That's what they saying. That's not us. We didn't write the book. Arthur Kostler did. A <laughs> Jewish man. Hey, Kev, just with that book, it scratches out the working definition. Yeah, it does. It scratches it out. Yeah, because you can't be anti-Semitic if you're not you're Semitic not Semitic. origin, right? Because uh, they are of Esau origin, Edom. Go back. I mean, go to the next one. Go to the next one. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's read that real quick. Read that. The descendants of this settlement, those who stayed where they were, those who emigrated to the United States and to other countries, and those who went to Israel, constitute now the large majority of world Jewry. So it says they immigrated, right? Read on. This was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known, but that does not alter the fact that the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European, uh -huh. and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga. From the Volga, that's in Russia, go ahead. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. The Caucasus Mountains, go ahead. Once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race. Which means white. Go ahead, because that's where they came out of. They came out of the Caucasus Mountains. That's why they call themselves Caucasians. Go ahead. And that genetically, they are more closely related to the Hun, Uyghur, and Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We, once again, we didn't write this book. <laughs> now read the green part. Should this turn out to be the case then the term anti-Semitism uh -huh. would become void of meaning. meaning. That's why they hold on to it so much. We're going to read. Keep reading, though. Keep reading. Based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims, uh -huh. the story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the cruelest hoax which history has ever perpetuated. Woo, that's perpetrated. heavy. That's heavy. The cruelest hoax which history has ever perpetrated. Go, go to the next one. Go to the next image. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. Read that. The apparent logic of the decision is, of course, due to the deceptive clarity of hindsight. 
In reality, the conversion to Judaism required an act of genius. Yet both the Arab and Hebrew sources on the history of the conversion, however varied in detail, point to a line of reasoning as indicated above. To quote Barry once more. Here you go. Read that. There can be no question that the ruler was actuated by political motives in adopting Judaism. Read that part again. There can be no question that the ruler was actuated by political motives in adopting Judaism. That's why the U.S. State Department has a working definition of anti-Semitism because it's a political move to keep them in power of all of that stuff that they rule behind the scenes to keep that crafty council amongst the over over the hidden people of God. Hey, that's why your friendly uh, President Trump went and said uh, uh, for Jerusalem for them to make that what. Um, that's yeah, the it's capital. The capital. They, yeah, because yep. it was Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Yep, Tel Aviv. And, and, and what's the Bible say about when they was in Tel Aviv? Give me that. Where's that? Zechariah? Pull that. That's why they had to move it from there to Jerusalem. They are trying to change the prophecy. Zechariah 9 and 6. They try to hide the identity of who they truly are. And who we truly are. They had it. Uh, Zechariah 9 and 6. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Uh, that is Tel Aviv. A bastard. Not the people of God. Not the sons and daughters of God. Ashdod is Tel Aviv. Read on. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Go back to that real quick. So God already prophesied way back that it would be a people living in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Israel, that are not his people. Go to the next one. Go to the next page. Let's see if that's it. Okay, so real quick, real quick. So remember, we're talking about hidden agenda. What is it that they trying to hide that come against black people when they associate themselves as the Israelites? I live in Bible, right? Go. This is written by them too. Re read the names on that. Old Testament text by Michael Aviona. Okay, we know that's Jewish names, right? New Testament text by Emil G. Kralin. See, that's the that's the modern name of the, the Jewish people. And they changed their name from Aviona to try to fit in Kralin. Yeah, now go to the pictures. So this is us in Egypt. Scroll up so you can see some. This is Israelites in Egypt. Does it got something on the bottom of that? Okay, it says, it says, uh, Joseph advice to Pharaoh. So then it's an image of it right there. That's the people that was in Egypt 400 years, 430 years slaving, right? Go to the next one. Read that at the, at the right-hand side of it. See the picture? Go back up. Go back up and read that to the right. It says painting from the tomb. Read that. Painting from tomb of Rechmeyer. Rechmeyer, 15th century BC. 15th century BC. This is why they come so hard against black people when you say you are the real Jews. That's in the tomb, Egyptian tombs. Next one. Read that to the bottom right of it. You see the image. This is a relief of them, not a bottom right. You see the hair, the texture that they trying to go across. They got braids in their hair. Plaques like Zacchaeus here, right? Look like Zacchaeus right there. Read that. Deportees. Deportees on relief from palace of Ashur Banapal at Nineveh, 7th century BC. At 7th century BC. Israelites being carried away by the Assyrians. Next one. There goes some black people, right? Who is that? Read that at the bottom. Priests on a fresco from Dura Europus, 3rd century AD. This is Israelite priest on a fresco, painting on the wall, basically. Black people, hidden agenda. Is that it on, is that it on the pictures? Ah, nature knows no color line. Let's go to this real quick. Okay, start from the top, right there, Waits. Waits says, an interesting gra gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Because uh, we black people, go ahead. 
especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. Now we read in Babylon the Timbuktu, right? That it said the Jews, it said he had to say the black Jews of Portugal were expelled. He just said the Jews was black in Portugal. Read on. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. The Duchess de Abrantes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. All look the same. Go ahead. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. Read the last part of that. Many of the Jews. Many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II. Go, go to the next one. Settled in the West and Indies. Settled in the West Indies. Now, remember what it said at that the Jews were Jewish people involved in the slave trade? It said that they had a what? They had a one dude that was heavily involved in Jamaica in the slave trade. Settled in the West Indies. Read on. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of these Jews and says they were Negroid. They were Negroid. That is why whenever we say that we are, go to, go to Matthew. This is the last script for headquarters, come on. Matthew chapter 11, and I want to read verse 26. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 26. Even so, Father. Matthew 10, 26. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 26. Fear them not therefore. You fear them not when you understand and got the proof of who you are. You got historical facts from them. Fear them not therefore. Read on. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. You can only hide it for so long. The spirit of the Lord is going to come upon the, uh, is upon the earth and the truth is going to be revealed no matter how much you try to um, cut the feet out from those people that realize who they are. Read it from the top again. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Read the next part. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. Uh -huh. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. When you do your research, you're lining up with the scriptures. What you find out, preach that thing in the, up, up to everybody, to all your people. Don't be afraid to, to bring it out. Just use wisdom and be wise as a serpent and, and, and do it in a certain place. Because like it says in Ecclesiastes, it's a season for everything. But you can't hide this truth. So that that whole anti-Semitism and all this stuff is a hidden agenda behind it so we don't find out who we truly are. That's why we got to know our history as a people. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.